Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a Dia de los Muertos sugar skull with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So there's so many different directions you can go with this painting. You can customize colors and designs and flowers. It's such a relaxing and super simple painting to do. I'm gonna show you step by step how to do this and feel free to go your own direction and change the colors and the designs. So I am actually going to start on an 11 by 14 inch canvas that I've painted black. So this is just a mess up painting that I had laying around and I just applied a coat of Mars black acrylic paint on the canvas and let it dry. And so the first thing I'm going to do is draw the shape of the skull, a very easy drawing to do. I have a piece of chalk and I'm going to start by drawing the head. So the top the top part of our skull is a circle shape. So I'm going to start by drawing a circle. You can also find a circle to trace um, if you would rather do that. But I'm going to draw the circle but I'm not going to draw it all the way around. I'm going to leave the bottom part open. So that's going to be the top part of the skull. So it's like you're drawing a circle but you're stopping at the bottom and I tend to just sketch it out and draw multiple lines until I kind of get the line that I'm going for. And the nice thing about chalk is you can erase. And the cheekbones, you're gonna start on the inside of the circle and curve out and down. Make it as symmetrical as possible and do the same thing on the other side. So curve in and curve out a little bit. And then our jaw, this is where our mouth is going to be. And you're gonna go down, and curve to create kind of like a semicircle shape on the bottom, but the sides of the jaw are a little bit more vertical. So I'm just kind of sketching this out. And remember that this is actually going to be painted a uh, solid white. So it might be tempting to draw the eyes and the nose and the mouth right now, but we don't want to do that because we're actually just going to paint this shape that we just drew with white. So I'm going to apply some drops of, uh, titanium white paint to that and I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush and I'm just going to paint my shape in. So everything I drew in with the chalk, it's just going to be painted in solid white and you really only need one coat of paint for this. If you notice your white paint isn't um, giving good coverage, you can always wait for it to dry and then apply a second coat of white paint. But there's going to be a lot of designs and interesting things to look at. So if there's a little bit of black showing through, it's not going to um, make a huge difference in the overall uh, painting. We're just filling that shape in as solid as possible. If you need to grab a round brush, especially for some of these curved areas, you can. I tend to paint on the inside of my chalk drawings um, and which leaves chalk showing through. So I will be erasing my chalk once this dries. So if you have chalk still showing like mine, you can wait for this to dry or you can uh, very carefully do this when the white paint is still wet, but you just wanna be careful. Um, I like to use a soft baby wipe to erase the chalk. It um, erases it nicely and just gently uh, wipe off the chalk. You don't wanna to press too hard where you're wiping the paint off the canvas, but just gently wipe off the chalk all the way around your drawing. And then I uh, am gonna go back in with a round brush and just kind of redefine some of my edges, um, make my cheekbones a little bit more symmetrical. So I'm just gonna go in there and just kind of go over some of the, the outside edges of my shape.
When you're done with this, you want to make sure your white is for the most part dry before moving on to the decoration part of this. And so I'm going to get my palette ready here. It's got some dried colors on there from doing my other school paintings. Um, but we're going to start with the black because we're going to get our eyes, nose, and mouth on there before we start decorating. So I'm using a number eight round brush. And so I'm just going to do the two eyes. So the eyes are going to be positioned just above the cheekbones, uh, but not too high up in the forehead area. So you want a lot of space up um, above the eyes. Um, so this circle is placed just above that cheekbone. Okay, so when I do circles, I like to start kind of in the middle and then do spiral around, or you can define the shape of your circle shape by painting the circle and then painting that in solid. You can also get a circle about that size to trace. You can trace both those circles on the canvas. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. So start out small and just, you can uh, allow your circle to gradually get bigger. So try to make them about the same size. There's a lot of symmetry in this painting, but it does not have to be perfect symmetry, especially since it's a painting. We can't, uh, sometimes when we paint a shape and try to paint the same shape again, it's not always the exact same thing again. So two eyes, and then our nose is going to be a heart shape. So I turn the canvas upside down to do the heart and so just paint kind of a narrow shaped heart. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. This is the number four round brush because that number eight is a little bit too large for this smaller shape. So I'm just gonna paint the shape of the heart and paint that in solid black. Then I'm going to grab my little brush. This is a number five zero round brush. So it's one of those tiny little detailer brushes. You can also use a liner brush that has the longer bristles. So anything with smaller bristles because we're going to do the mouth. So I'm going to do the a smile face. So this curved line is going to start just on below that cheekbone. So see the bottom curve of that cheekbone. Um, that's where that curve is going to kind of line up with. So there, give him a smile. And then to do the teeth, I did a vertical line right down the center. And then I did more vertical lines that gradually got smaller to the left. So I did three and three. And then above each of those is going to be a curved line. So each of those is gonna connect with a curved line and you can always fix this later uh, with white paint if you if you if your line kind of got out of line where it wasn't supposed to be um, I added two more teeth in here smaller ones so another vertical line and curved line okay so we have our basic shape our basic facial features of our sugar skull in and I'm gonna touch up this nose here just a bit. He ended up with a really big nose. That's okay. Um, so once we have our basic facial features set, you want to make sure that black dries, especially if you're going to put designs over the black of the eyes and the nose. So make sure that dries. Come back and we are going to start um, adding pretty designs and flowers to it. So I'm going to load my palette with um, these colors that I chose. You don't have to use these exact colors. You can have fun and choose um, pretty much any color scheme that you want that fits your personality um, or your favorite colors or colors that represent somebody 
um, that you are thinking of when you're doing this painting. So I chose these colors and I loaded my palette with them. So the colors were listed on the screen and what I was loading my palette with. And I'm going to start uh, by adorning the eyes. So I'm going to grab a number four round brush and medium magenta. And I am basically just going to do little semicircle shape, little petal shapes, I guess, around the eye. So I'm just doing curve, filling it in solids. So very, very simple design. And I'm going to do that for both of the eyes. You can get inspiration for different designs by looking on Google, um, searching Dia de los Muertos uh, sugar skulls and looking at the different designs and patterns that you can do. Um, some of them have butterflies, most of them have flowers, a lot of whimsical pretty spiral designs. There's so many different things you can do with this and or you can uh, copy exactly what I'm doing. That's perfectly okay too. Um, so I'm just repeating this pattern with the pink around the eyes. And then rinsing the brush off and going on to my next color slash design. So I'm going to actually do a flower at the top of his head. So this is primary yellow and the number four round brush. So to do this flower, I did a half circle on the top and then I'm going to outline each of the petal shapes. So these petals are long, curvy, and pointed petals. So I'm gonna do as many as I can fit right here. So I have four petals that are showing, and then there's one that's kind of going off on the side. And then I can go ahead and paint that in. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange, and I'm actually gonna have it be orange kind of towards the middle part of the flower and then kind of blend some yellow outwards. And I know I'm repeating myself with this, but you can change the color of this if you would rather have a blue flower or a red flower. Um, that's something that you can decide to do. So I'm just blending that yellow with that orange a little bit so the petals have kind of a two-toned look. And then the center part of the flower is going to be painted in as well. I'm just using my brush and dragging it outwards and that's allowing that color to blend. But I'm not going to blend it all the way. I'm going to let it look like it's got some yellow and orange on it. And I can wipe my brush off and choose a color that I want for the center. So let's try orange and I'll just paint that center circle and then Maybe that orange doesn't have a lot of contrast, so maybe I can grab some of that red. And then it'll be kind of a darker color. And then I can go on and uh, decide what other decoration I want to do. So um, I love the look of these little dots. This is that five zero round brush. And so I just grabbed the white and I'm dotting, I'm just doing little white dots on the inside part of that circle and I'm just dotting them all around. And I'm gonna do the same thing for both of the eyes. So just little white dots. Um, you can also use the back of your paintbrush to do dots. Uh, you can use a little dotting tool if you have a dotting tool. This is a, also a painting that you can, if you have paint pens, if you like to use the Posca paint pens, you can grab those and use those to help decorate so many different creative things. You can use glitter in this. You can use glow in the dark paint or fluorescent paint if you want it to look like it's glowing under the black light, that would look really cool. Um, so next I'm gonna do a mandala sort of design on the cheekbones. So this is the color primary blue and I'm just gonna do two curved lines and maybe some more dots. I'm gonna try to do it symmetrical. So that means the design is going to be the same on each side. And I'll do a little petal or a little sun rays kind of going out. This is something that you really can just zen out to. You don't really have to think too hard. You just paint pretty designs everywhere and just kind of let your imagination go with it. And so 
Um, I have a, a lot of color on my palette. I can mix blue with white together to create a lighter blue. And so maybe I'll do this leaf sort of curvy vine thing on the bottom. So that's just the primary blue mixed with white makes a, a light blue. So don't be uh, afraid to mix colors and create um, some different tints of those colors, especially if you're mixing it with white. I'm just going to add some leaves on the vine. The little leaves. Again, symmetry. So one on each side. They're kind of mirror mirroring each other, but it doesn't have to be perfect symmetry. Add another leaf on the end of that vine. I can rinse that off and switch back to my little tiny brush and so I can use the black paint as a design color option and I love spiral lines so I'm going to do some spiral lines under the flower try to make them symmetrical and I'm going to add another set of flowers or some a red flower here so I'm going to go back to the number four round brush so switching between a lot of brushes here so grabbing that pyrol red color and doing my half circle for the middle part of the flower maybe I'll do a different color petal so I'll do orange and do the little petal shapes around that flower and I'll do the same thing to the other flower as well Then I'm going to go in and maybe add another line inside of this mandala design in here. Give that some more interest. Just a lot of details in this. It takes quite a bit of time to do all these details, but I mentioned earlier how it's really a zen sort of thing. You don't really have to think too hard. Got some blue smudges on my black background but you don't have to think too hard you just kind of relax and add your designs and just see where your creativity takes you I love these white dots so I'm going to do some more white dots on the inside of the nose and maybe I'll grab the red maybe I'll do a red heart or a red upside down heart on the inside of that nose really like how that looks it helps that um, center part pop with that red looks really pretty and then maybe we can do some more petal designs right here in the center uh, between the eyes We will be adding designs on the outside part of our sugar skull too. I'll show you how to do the simple roses on the um, kind of the roses that are above the head and on the outside. Maybe some more red dots. I decided I wanted to outline my big flower at the top just to get the uh, petals to kind of pop a little bit more. So I'm using that little five zero round brush and very loosely outlining the petals. And when I say loosely, it just means that the line's not continuous. I'm just barely holding that brush and that line is just kind of um, not really solid. It kind of picks up and then goes down and it just doesn't look like it's continuously outlined it's a loose outline so that really helps to get that flower at the top to pop a little bit give it some more contrast and then maybe I'll take those black dots and kind of adorn this a little bit more on the center
Next, I'm going to show you how to paint simple roses. So uh, my sugar skull has some roses above the head, some red roses. And so I did this with the round, the number eight round. So when I do roses, I like to just start with the solid darker color. So this is just pyrrole red. And I'm using my brush to make the shape of the rose. I'm not worrying about the petals right now. I'm just creating the shape. So you can paint a circle, but I like to make my circle a little bit more organic. So the shape of the circle kind of has the petals on the outside part of the shape. Then without rinsing my brush, I'm grabbing titanium white and mixing that with the red. It's going to make a light red color. It's got to be light enough to have contrast. Then I'm going to start in the center of the rose and I'm going to do a C stroke. That means you're doing a curved stroke, a little curved stroke on the center. And then you're painting more C strokes and you're staggering those strokes, working your way outwards. So those light red strokes are the petals of our rose. And so I'm going to repeat that again for another rose. And I didn't even rinse my brush. I just grabbed the red and I'm going to make another rose shape next to it. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm creating the shape of it using my round brush. And then I'll go ahead and wipe my brush off instead of rinse it and grab the titanium white. So it just has to be a lighter color than the first layer. So this is just the white with a little bit of red still on it. Do the same thing. So start in the center, do a curved stroke, stagger each of the curved strokes, working your way outwards. The white part of the petal creates the contrast to make it look like a rose. Very, very simple. And so uh, you can do different color roses if you want. Mine are just gonna all be red and I'll just um, add a few more of the same type of rose all uh, above the head of the skull. So this one's actually going to be smaller and kind of in between those other two. But still the same technique. It's going to be overlapping the ones that are adjacent to it. So do the red, grab the little bit of white on your brush and do your curved strokes, working your way outwards. And I'll go ahead and add another rose over here on the left. Same exact technique, do the shape, then grab your white and do your petals. Next, I will be demonstrating how to do the leaves. So I'm loading the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent on my palette. You can use any green that you have on hand. You don't have to use this exact green. So this is a number four round brush and very simple. Just paint a leaf shape 
on the side of your rose and then fill it in. So the thing about painting on a black canvas is a lot of paint colors aren't gonna show up bright and opaque unless it has titanium white as either like a base color or mixed in it. So when we did the roses, that pyrrol red color is an opaque color and we had white in our petals. So this green is not very opaque, but if I grab some white and kind of blend that white into the green, that's gonna help it to show up brighter. Um, so you can also just mix green and white together and use that to paint your leaf or let it blend on the canvas. So there's multiple ways you can do that. Or you can paint your leaves white first and then go back over it with green. And so I'm just going to do several little leaf shapes all throughout um, the area where the roses are. Um, you can also do, or I'm also doing like a vine thing, so a spiral um, little line. And then on this side, I'm just going to do some more leaves. So again, adding that white into the green is going to help it show up a little bit better. Sometimes I like to make my leaves um, brighter on one side, so half of the leaf is a little bit brighter, so a little bit more white on one side, and the other side's a little bit darker. It helps the leaves to pop a little bit better too. And then we can do a vine thing on this side. Um, doesn't have to be symmetrical unless you want it to be. So this vine's actually gonna go down a little bit. And then I'll do these little tiny rounded leaves on each side of that line. There's lots of different floral patterns and designs that you can do on the outside of your sugar skull painting. I'm gonna grab some more green, add that to my palette, and I'm gonna do the little rounded leaf um, shapes. I'm just taking the brush and just kind of stamping it to create that rounded shape. Just the tip, the paint right there on the tip of the brush. I'm just taking that and just pressing down and that creates that rounded shape. I'm going to do two leaf and stem designs over on the left and right of the skull. So I'm just taking that same color and I'm going to do a long wavy line. And then there's going to be leaves attached to that. I could grab some yellow and add some yellow into that if I wanted to, to play around with the different greens create a yellowish green if you want you can add some blue to your green you can even have these leaves be pink if you wanted to there's so many different directions you can take with this so i'm adding the pretty leaves and i'm going to do the same thing on this side Next, I'm gonna do two simple flowers on the bottom of the painting. So I have the number eight round brush with a little medium magenta on it, but I also loaded some of the pyrrole red on my um, palette, so kind of a red pink color. And um, same thing with that, it's the same kind of flower that I did on the Sugar Skull's forehead at the top. Um, just do a circle and then do your petal shape, long pointed petals, and then fill it in solid. So just a very simple flower. It doesn't have to be elaborate or fancy unless you wanted to do that. So just making this a very simple, easy painting. I'm 
this um, sugar skull design was a lot of fun to do. I did it three times. Each time the designs came out differently and yours are gonna come out differently too. And this next flower on the left is gonna be an orange. So I just grabbed some yellow and put that on my palette and mixed that with the red that was on my brush. So it made a darker orange color. Um, but same thing, do the circle and then the petal shapes. If you wanted to do roses down here instead of flower, these other kind of flowers, I don't know what kind of flowers they are, daisies, um, you can do roses instead. So I'm just going to paint that in solid. And then I'll think of a different color to do the circle in the center of the flower. So for the center, I'll do a yellow and white and mix those together so it will be a bright yellow. The yellow tends to not be so opaque against the black, but adding the white in it is going to allow it to be bright. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the circle in the center of both of the flowers. Very simple. going to add some contrast to these petals by loosely outlining the shape of them with that yellow so very loosely this is still that number eight round brush but it's got a nice point to it where I can use it to outline and that's what I'm doing there just adds a pop of brighter color on the outside part of the petals since that red is kind of dark And I can add more designs. I can do spirals. I can go in and do dots if I wanted to do little dots in certain places. Maybe over here I decided to do a yellow rose in the corner. So I did the center and um, wipe that off and do the white. So the same technique that I did with the red, but I'm doing with the yellow now. And the white is um, not white mixed with yellow, it's just white, so it's bright enough to where those petals are gonna show up. So there's a yellow rose, and then I can do another rose in the upper right corner if I wanted to. So maybe this one's got a little bit more of an orange tint to it, but still kind of it on the uh, yellow spectrum here and so just doing that so it's off the canvas do the shape and then I can do my white petals after that so grabbing the white and doing the white just the, adding that white on the tip of the brush and doing your curved um, little strokes to form the petals mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go in and do some more leaves. So with that, the same color and technique that I did with those other rose petal or roses, rose leaves. And just doing that with the number eight round brush, grabbing the white, doing one side lighter than the other. And I can do a leaf over here on this side, same technique. I have my 5-0 round brush back and I'm going to go and do some more dot designs on the outside area. So just doing little dots over here below the jaw really kind of adds some interest and um, little bright contrast in certain areas. And I'm just going to add those dots kind of all throughout. Maybe there's dots next to some petals or um, leaves on the outside. So you can kind of decide where you want to go with these dots, or if you don't want dots, you don't have to do dots. Do a few on the outside part of the petals. Thank you. 
a lot of sugar skull paintings or designs have a flower on the inside of the eye. So I'm going to show you how to do that if that's what you want to do. Um, this flower was made with the 5-0 round brush. And so I did two vertical petals first and then two horizontal petals and then I did diagonal petals. So I'll show you this again. Two vertical petals, two horizontal petals. and then diagonal petals in between each of those. And then if you didn't want those to stay white, you can let that dry and then you can add any color that you want over it. It'll show up nice and opaque, especially if that layer is white. But I'm actually going to take the blue and I'll just do blue dots on the center of our flower. So they're little white daisies. I'm going in here and uh, redefining my petal shapes, uh, making sure that they're even. Um, there's still a little bit of blue on my brush, so that little bit of blue, I'm loading it with the white, but there's still a little bit of blue left, and it's kind of mixing with the white, but I kind of like it. It makes it look like there's a little bit of blue in our daisies. You can keep going with this if you want. Add more designs and flowers and dots and spirals or even butterflies and some unique things, but this is the conclusion of the tutorial, and I really enjoyed this one. It's such a super simple easy design and I hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.